Hello everyone, welcome to Leap Scholar. From free IELTS lectures and practice questions to mock interviews and tips and tricks, you will find everything here at IELTS Prep by Leap Scholar to ace the IELTS test. Hence, to ensure the best learning experience, make sure to subscribe our channel and hit the bell icon to get your daily dose of IELTS content. This is the IELTS listening test. You will hear a number of different recordings and you will have to answer questions on what you hear. There will be time for you to read the instructions and questions and you will have a chance to check your work. All the recordings will be played once only. The test is in four parts. At the end of the test, you will be given 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet. Now turn to part one. You will listen to an interview with Mr. Sergeant and a customer care officer of a vacuum cleaning company. First, you have some time to look at questions one to five. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 5. Hello. Yes, hello. It's Tom Berlinson calling from Clean It Vacuum Cleaners. Mr. Sergeant, is it? Yes. I understand you recently purchased a vacuum from us. Is that correct? Yes, that's right. Well, this is simply a call to find out if you've been happy with your purchase. Our company prides itself on its after-sales service. Just because you've bought from us doesn't mean you're no longer important to us. Could you spare a few moments to answer some questions? Sure. How long will this take? Well, not long at all, Mr. Sergeant. Usually only about three or four minutes. OK. What would you like to know? OK, great. I'll just go through the survey form, and uh, if you'll just bear with me, this shouldn't take long at all. Uh, OK, first question. Which model did you purchase and when? Yes, it was the Super Cleaner. We bought it about two weeks ago. Uh, see, it was a Monday, I think, because my wife's birthday was on the Sunday, 24th. Uh, that would make it the 25th. Yes, August the 25th. OK. Now, do you remember the name of the salesperson? Was he worth remembering? Yes, his name was Jim. My wife and I were very impressed with him. He was a great source of information, very helpful. Great. I'll make sure that your kind words about Jim are passed on to him. OK, now let's see. Ah, yes. Have you purchased any other products from us this year? Oh, let's see. Uh, of course, we bought the super cleaner. I think that's all. Well, we bought some vacuum bags with it as well. Um, uh, I think Daisy bought some carpet cleaner from your store back in February. That's about all, I think. I have to ask my wife about that one. She's not here at the moment. No, no, that's OK. Your answer will do fine. We don't have to be too picky. OK, so how much money would you say you've spent, all told, in the store? Just an approximate amount will do fine. Wow, that's a difficult question. Uh, I don't really know. The, the vacuum was £150. The other stuff, I'd say around £15, I suppose the total was around £165. But I couldn't be totally sure. It may be a bit more than that. That's fine. That's fine. Now, the next thing on my list is how would you rate the quality of the products you purchased? Good, actually. Very good. So far, we've not had any problems with the products from CleanIt. Service and value have been very good. So I guess you have a loyal customer. Oh, wonderful. I'm really pleased that your experience with our company has been a positive one. Tell me, do you purchase any other items of cleaning equipment? If so, from whom? I'm very fussy about the interior of my car, you know. The seats and carpets, I found a product from Easy Clean which works well on the carpets and an air freshener from Mr Tidy that really smells good. Apart from that, oh, I couldn't say for sure, I think my wife buys floor cleaner from Johnson Brothers. Before you listen to the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 6 to 10.
Now listen and answer questions six to ten. Well, we've just introduced a new line of car fresheners. You might like to stop by. We'll offer you a twenty percent discount. Okay, we're almost to the end of the questions. Now I know you were happy with Jim, but overall, how would you rate the quality of our service? Fine. I thought it was good. The lady in accounts was a little unfriendly, but overall, I would say the service was quite good. Actually, Jim made all the difference, and you certainly seem to be a very nice person. Oh, thanks, Mr. Sergeant. Please,、uh, Tom, call me Terry. Oh, okay, Terry. Very good. Second last question. We're thinking of expanding our trading hours. When are the best times? The most convenient for you to shop? Oh, I'm not a shopper. I mostly leave it all up to my wife. She works full time. Let's see. For me, I guess I'd have to say Sundays between one and three, and、uh, I'm not working on Thursdays now. So if I had to, I guess Thursdays between say eleven and twelve noon. Okay. Last question, Mr. Sergeant Terry. Do you have any other suggestions for us? Anything at all? Well, come to think of it, now there was one thing: turn up the air conditioner. I seem to remember sweltering in there, and it was unpleasant and hot. Also, and this is just me, I always like to have some music playing, you know, quietly in the background. It just makes the place seem friendlier, you know, more professional. Well, I'll certainly mention that to management. Well, that's it. Thanks so much for your time, Terry. If there is anything we can do in the future to help you, don't hesitate to call us. Okay. Bye now. Yes. Bye bye, and thanks again. That is the end of part one. You now have thirty seconds to check your answers. Now it turns to part two. You will hear a childcare worker telling some mothers about the advantages of her centre. First. You have some time to look at questions eleven to sixteen. Now listen carefully and answer questions eleven to sixteen. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Stanfield Childcare Centre. Now I know you're all new mothers, and you like to cling to your children. You've certainly spent a lot of time raising them to the age of four, and are perhaps reluctant to leave them here at our centre. Well, one of the first things you should understand is that here it is safe, very safe. Look around, and you'll see that every room has padded walls. Other centres have standard painted walls, but here we have invested a lot to ensure your children will not hurt themselves. When running around and possibly tripping over, this padding extends around all corners. That is the areas most likely to bruise and cut your active little child. So, you can rest assured that any accidents of a physical nature are not likely to happen here. Now, you don't want to dump your child at this centre and let them waste their time. You want them to learn, and that's one of the greatest assets of our establishment. Our staff are not only trained childcare workers, but all of them have a special skill, which they can impart to your child. Whether it be teaching the ABC, some basic mathematics, artistic skills, or physical education, we are particularly known for our preschool literacy program, and have a wealth of learning toys specially designed to develop your child's potential. Of course, one concern many mothers have is that. In environments such as these, colds and flus and other viral nasties can be easily spread around. It's a very legitimate concern, and one which we take seriously, and we pride ourselves on our precautions. For a start, unlike most centres which clean with standard detergents, we disinfect every service at the end of every day, using a special disinfectant wash. Some places just wipe surfaces daily with a damp cloth, but not us, and that's just the start. We also physically check your children when they arrive every day, and if we feel your child is sick, 
We ask him or her to wear a face mask to ensure germs are not transmitted. If your child is noticeably sick, then we ask you to take them back home to recover. This might sound a little unkind, but we hope parents can understand that these measures are for the benefit of all. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 17 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 17 to 20. Now at Stanfield Child Care Centre, we have excellent child care officers. And let me briefly introduce them. We have Susan, Andrea, Bella, Kathy, Lisa and Liz. They're all fully trained and come with some individual assets which make them even better. Bella, for instance, knows children very well having worked here for five years, and Cathy has her own family, two little girls, so she can talk to you with first-hand knowledge of what it's really like to raise children. But getting back to Bella, she often relaxes here after work, spending long hours chatting to parents, as does Cathy, in fact. But in terms of hours, nothing can compare to Andrea, who will sometimes spend the night here, staying in our overnight room. Why? Because this centre is very friendly and simply a great place to be. Bella, for example, used to be quite shy herself, but now is marvellous with the little kiddies, as outgoing as any of them. We let Cathy, though, deal with the particularly quiet and introverted children. Since having her own family, she knows what can really bring them out. Of course, what better way to do this than with yummy homemade cakes? And Kathy often gets these from Bella, who can make some of the best in town. Yes, everyone here brings something special, which is why we're one of the best childcare centres in the business. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part three. You'll hear three students discussing an assignment they are doing together. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 26. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 26. Hi Alice, wow, I'm about 15 minutes late. Sorry about that, the bus got stuck in a lot of traffic. You want to go over the presentation we have to do now, or get something to eat? No problem, there's always traffic at this time. Juan and I were thinking we could eat afterwards, you know, so we could relax and enjoy our meal. Sounds good, so let's go over what we have to do again. OK, well, since it's a long presentation, we'll work together on the different parts of it. What did we decide to call it again? I think it was Eastern European Economies Move Towards Democracy and Capitalism. The professor said the presentation had to be how long? Hmm, he said about 35 minutes. That is how long the three of us are supposed to present. Then there will be a 10-minute question and answer session. Any student or the professor may ask us a question regarding the topic. Our grade also depends on how well we do in that part. We also have to write a summary of our presentation, right? Yes, the summary of our presentation has to be submitted one week before our presentation date. It must be 500 words. How are we going to do the presentation? I thought we could give the class a basic handout, like an outline of our presentation. We could even create a poster with a map of the area we were talking about. Well, I was thinking we could make a slideshow using computer software and then using a projector during our presentation. People pay more attention to images on a screen. Hmm. Well, actually, I've never really used that kind of software. 
I always thought a basic handout or poster was sufficient. I think giving the information we have with visuals like that will really make our presentation stand out. Well, it would have to be done really well to make any sort of impact, and I'm not sure if that would be a good use of time. Maybe it would be better to spend that time on research and writing. I don't think it would take away that much time. Well, all of us have to research the assignment well and write a really good presentation. I think making a fancy visual presentation wouldn't help. Actually, I think such slideshows are distracting. People focus more on the images on the screen than what the presenters are saying. I'm still not sure I agree with you. Before you hear the rest of the discussion, you have some time to look at questions 27 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 27 to 30. All right then, let's go through some of the reading material. What was the main text we had? It's called The Political Economy of the Former Soviet Bloc by Fovac. That's spelled F-O-V-A-C? Yes, that deals with the specific area of Europe we are researching. There is also An Economy in Transition by Smith. That one is published by the University Press. Well, the professor suggested another useful book, one that focuses on the leadership of those countries. Sometimes the personalities of those in power affected historical events. It's called Foisted into Power by Brown, published by the Academic Press in 2005. Well, we still have to plan out a few more things, but I am quite hungry now. Shall we get a snack before we proceed? Definitely. I'm getting a sandwich. I need some rice with lentil curry, that's for sure. Let's go to the all-campus dining center then. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part four. You will hear a talk on the importance of soil in organic agriculture. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Welcome to this talk on soil science and organic farming. Dirt, soil, earth, loam, mud or dust, it doesn't matter what you call it, is of primary importance in the production of food and other crops. Most people think of it just as a substrate or medium in which plants grow, but it's more than that. It's actually a living entity. Or it should be if it's healthy, and human health is affected by the health of the soil. Healthy, living soil is literally crawling with life. There are the obvious earthworms, which burrow in the soil and help to aerate and improve it, beetles and other hard-backed insects, and various invertebrates like centipedes. Then there are fungi and bacteria, also living forms. Healthy soil needs food, air and water to help plants grow. And the more nutrients in plants, the more available for humans and livestock. It stands to reason, therefore, that plants grown in poor soil will have few nutrients to pass on to the consumer, whose well-being will be worse off over the long term. So, where do plants get their nourishment? Most of it comes from the soil.
Some nutrients are made up of minerals from the earth, while others come from dead plant and animal matter, which is broken down over time by the living insects and other organisms in the soil. Plants depend on these little living creatures to convert minerals and other vital elements into a utilizable form that can be taken up by the plants. And it's a synergistic relationship. In turn, the plants assist those helpful organisms by releasing sugars and enzymes back into the soil. Before I go any further, let's take a look at the structure of soil. Now, if you look at the diagram, you'll see that soil is made up of many different layers. Let's start at the bottom. This is the bedrock under all the other layers. The layer above that is called regolith. Here, the bedrock is slightly broken up, but plant roots don't penetrate this layer. Moving up the chart to the next layer, we come to the subsoil, which contains clay and mineral deposits. On top of that is the alluviation or leaching layer. This is quite light in colour and is mostly just sand and silt. As we get near the surface, we find the topsoil. You will hear a lot of talk about topsoil amongst farmers and other agriculturalists. It's the most important layer of all because it's where seeds germinate and roots grow. Now, at the top of the chart, you will see a comparatively thin layer. This is organic matter that is still in the process of decomposition. It mostly consists of leaf litter and humus. Just think of the surface of the forest floor. Partly decayed leaves and twigs, that sort of thing. As you can imagine, good soil forms very slowly over time, but it can be lost very rapidly through erosion. And, in addition, soil quality can be affected by pollution due to anything from industrial waste to the artificial fertilizers used by conventional farmers, which have been shown to suppress the diverse life forms in the soil. This is why organic agriculture is the way of the future. Let's take a quick look at the conventional system, which is often based on monoculture, the production of a single large crop. It relies on chemicals for fertilizer and pest control. It is also becoming an increasingly common practice to use genetically engineered seeds. And more chemicals are used to control insects and fungi, which attack crops in storage and during transportation. Also, did you know that there is no requirement for conventional growers to maintain records of their production practices? Organic growers, on the other hand, choose the most environmentally friendly options for dealing with pests and disease problems, working towards prevention in the first place. Some of the strategies they employ include alternating the crops grown in each field, as opposed to monocropping. Because different plants add different nutrients to the soil by rotating crops, the soil is naturally replenished. This can do away with the need for pesticides, because the problem insects' life cycles are naturally interrupted. Surrounding crops with green waste can not only conserve moisture in the soil, but it can prevent weeds from springing up, and it also feeds the beneficial microorganisms. When it's ploughed under, it feeds the soil by building more organic matter. Organic farmers often release beneficial insects as predators, which precludes the need for artificial pesticides. Animal manure, combined with green waste materials, correctly composted to kill pathogens and weed seeds, fertilizes the soil in a way that encourages life rather than suppressing it. And, by the way, use of manure in organic farming is highly regulated. In fact, all agricultural inputs are evaluated for their long-term effects on the environment, regardless of whether they are synthetic or natural. To sum up, organic farming is the only sustainable way of feeding the people on this planet and keeping both the planet and the people in good health. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers. That is the end of the listening test. In the IELTS test, you would now have 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet. Please share your score in the comment box below. For more such training videos, subscribe to our channel, IELTS Prep by Leap Scholar.